Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started here. Once again, my name is Eric Morgan. I'm with the Level 365 team. I'm one of the escalation engineers. I also handle the training, um, and I work closely with our support team and our implementation team uh, for various things. You may have uh, reached or talked to one of our other team members here. Um, we have Ben and Philip are also part of my team. Um, they do stuff on the sales side and implementation for the most part, and also are on my escalation team when needed. Then we also have Rebecca. She's our director of customer success. That is her contact information for her email. And then we also have Karen, one of the um, or our, our account manager, um, and that is her email address there as well. Any of us can be reached through the support number, followed by option one to reach our support team, and then they can direct your call. Uh, to anyone that's needed. Uh, before we begin, we will be uh, sending out a recording to you of this training. Uh, that recording takes about 48 hours or any time within that 48 hours before it gets sent out to you. So just be on the lookout for that. If after two days you don't receive the recording, please let us know and we will uh, get that sent out to you. The next step we do have our, um, uh, if you any time you can either submit a chat or a Q&A and uh, to let me know if you have a question. And I can always pause for you. Uh, so our agenda today, we're going to go over the basic navigation of the admin portal. I'm going to go over holiday schedules, uh, greeting management, password resets, recycling users, and voicemail setup. And of course, if you have any, uh, any questions throughout the way, please let me know. We'll go ahead and uh, get into this. Uh, so to con contact our support, if you don't have any information just yet about our support team, um, we do have a support portal, and that's support.level365.com. And that houses our knowledge base. Our knowledge base, we are revamping it right now to get an update on a bunch of articles and to kind of make it look make it a little bit better to navigate as well. Um, so that's being actively worked on. Uh, we hope to have that completed in the next couple months. And then you can also reach us at our email address, support at level365.com, by telephone from a couple different options. So you have the our, our main support number, the 317-810-0024, option one, or from any Level 365 device, whether that's a web phone, mobile app, or a desk phone, dialing 611 will also get you directly to us. <laughs> and then in our support portal and web app, we do have a chat button in the top bottom left corner. Um, it will say support, and then you click on the live chat. Our telephones are available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30, or sorry, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And then our chat is available from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Anytime outside of those hours, um, you will receive a, if you call into a um, call into our main number, you'll receive a voicemail um, box. You'll enter your, your, leave a voicemail for us. That voicemail will automatically get sent over to our team <clears throat> and that will get triaged as needed I do apologize here just realized my camera was not on so uh the the voicemail will get sent over to our ticketing system that ticket gets notified or notification sent out to the on-call person um, any change related incident um, or change related ticket that we get uh, that'll just be worked on next business day um, if it's a emergency, you know, you're not receiving calls, all phones are down type thing, that will be worked immediately. Um, and the on-call person will, will address that as accordingly. So let's go into the basic navigation of the admin portal. Get logged out here, get back into my correct account. So I'm just gonna log into our Level 365 web app. So upon initially, uh, upon first login, you'll see um, that your navigation bar at the top looks a little different than what you would see under your personal account. So we have our home, our call center section, users, conference, auto attendance, call queues. Um, let me actually, I'll go through into them real quick. So homepage, that's just gonna give you um, a quick look at any current calls that are actively going on. Um, a brief, some brief statistics on different things. Uh, the call center page that will give you a quick overview of any queue call queues that you have. 
Um, you can check out any reports, settings. Um, next section is your user section. This will give you an overview of all of your users. Um, and that will show you both system users and your actual users yourself. Conferences is just any conference bridges if you have them. Um, a lot of clients actually don't use that. And the auto attendance, um, this is any kind of IVR or auto attendant that you may have. This is where you can select them and edit them as needed. Your call queues, this is where you can actually set up your call queues and have a little bit more control over them. <coughs> This gives you all your settings if you select them <clears throat> and a brief overview of what the ring type and the extension, um, if there's any colors in the queue, and then any agents that you have. <clears throat> Timeframes. Timeframes is only needed if you are creating specific um, answering rules. And we'll go into that later on. Music on hold is where you can actually set up um, you know, specific music on hold that you would need for a particular queue. Um, or for your domain wide, we just ask that you're using a .wav file and that you own the license for that file, <clears throat> for that music. Inventory is going to give you any phone numbers that you have assigned to your um, to your instance, whether that's main numbers for the the call flow or direct numbers to your staff. Lastly, you do have call history. This gives you an overview of any calls that have been made or received or missed on your platform. And you can filter that down um, as needed. Um, you can only search by or look by uh, 31 days at a time, so just a month span. Uh, so if you need multiple, multiple, multiple months, you just have to uh, manually change that filter each time. So let's go ahead and start back at the um, Let's see, we want to do basic navigation first. So I just went over that. Um, let's go ahead and go into your uh, user section. That's a, an important one that people like. So if we need to um, create a user, recycle them, or submit a, you know, change a password for the person, um, what we'll do is, so we have Adam West. He's our user as of 1002. This user no longer has the, um, they need their password reset and they don't want to go through the forgot password on the login page. If you just want to do it quickly for them, you can. It's just sending them an email and then that will force them to update their password. So we're going to find Adam in our list. Uh, you can either locate them if they're on the front page. You can also um, edit your, what you view here. If you don't want to look at the system users, so that's any auto attendance, call queues, anything of that nature, you can just uncheck this box, or sorry, check that box and I will hide them. I currently have these a little bit different than, than what you normally see. Let's go ahead and hide those. If you have more than 25 um, users, you can expand that to 50 or 100, however you would like. Um, and then let's also go into the table settings. So under the table settings, this is where you can change what information you're looking for. Um, most importantly, a lot of people just want to see the department, site, email, um, and then sometimes they might want um, caller ID information in case they need to see that, what the caller ID is, if they, you have a bunch of people that have individual ones. But typically this is what, you, what most people like to stay on. So let's go into Adam here. We're going to reset his password. So we're going to find Adam. We're going to select his name. And then under the tabs, we're going to select the advanced tab. Under the advanced tab, we have a, a couple different options. So we have the reset user. This will allow us to recycle the user. And this is basically a user swap. Uh, so Adam is no longer with the company. And say we have another um, new user coming in, Bethany. Bethany is going to take over his account. And I'll go over that in just a moment. Um, so we have two different ways to reset a password. We have the send the welcome email. So this will actually send them the, the basic welcome email that will allow them to set up their login password and their voicemail pin. So unfortunately, we don't have a way to just reset the voicemail pin at this time. Um, so we have to give them both. Uh, they can reuse the same password that they have used previously. So there's no issues with, you know, re-entering that same password before. Um, and then we also have the force password reset. 
So this will clear the password from the system and forces the user to update their password again. Um, and then you can choose to send a email to them or not choose to send the email. If you don't send the email, the user would have to attempt to log in and then it would force them to um, send a recovery to themselves to get that password. <clears throat> so um, if you ever reset the password, just make sure you select that box if you're looking to send them the email for them to update that password. Now, as I mentioned previously, if we want to recycle this user, um, say this user is no longer with a company and a new employee has taken over, again, you find the person's name, select the advanced tab, and then select the reset user. Under here, it'll give you a few different options. Uh, we have the ability to delete messages, delete answering rules, to basically delete anything and put it all back into new so that the new user can set up whatever they would like. And then we just select that recycle user box. Oops. So we'll select recycle user. We want to delete everything that we have and then hit reset. Click reset again. Now we're sure. It's going to take a few moments. It's going to give us this next window. So we're going to type in a new person. We're going to say Bethany Johnson. And her name will be. Oh, we don't want her. So this is just a filler email, so don't worry about that. And this is where you can um, select send welcome email. This will automatically send an email to that person so they can set up their account. Now we don't recommend sending a welcome email until the person actually has that email um, is up and active. If the email address is not valid at the time of sending the email, our email system will flag it as uh, basically it's a fake email or it, it won't route, we get a bounce back, and it will automatically block that email address. Now we can, if you let us know that you know if the person's not getting emails, we can always go into our system and check for that issue. Um, it does happen, you know, often. So just let us know in that case, and then we can always remove that block, and uh, we can resend that email. So we just always recommend wait until the person's email is active before you send a welcome email. So we'll go ahead and click save because this person isn't starting until next Monday. So we'll send the welcome email when they get into the office. <clears throat> or you can send it on the Friday as well because the, the, the welcome emails last, welcome emails and password resets are good for 72 hours. Uh, so you can always, if they put a new user is starting on a Monday, you can always send it on a Friday evening um, to give you plenty of time. But you can always resend those emails and reset passwords as many times as you need. Uh, there's no limit, so you don't have any issues doing that. <clears throat> so within here, we do have, um, you can edit whatever you would like on there as far as their name, their department, their location, uh, their time zone as well, in case you have someone that's in a different time zone, you want that to reflect. Um, of course, whether they're recorded or not recorded. <clears throat> And here you can change their caller ID information. Now, one thing to note is this emergency caller ID. Caller ID, we do recommend making sure that the person has the correct uh, number set up for them. So, if they are moving to, or if you have multiple locations, just ensure that that number is properly um, set up for that location. Um, let me just check and see if you're able to see that. Okay. So, under the inventory section, this is where I'm talking about. Under inventory and then emergency numbers, we have emergency numbers and legacy. This will be updated in one of our next patches. <clears throat> but this is where you can see what location um, that the person is assigned to. So you would select the name itself, and it will show the address that's assigned to that number. And that's just this is the number that gets sent out to the emergency services when 911 is called and then they are able to match this number with an address. So all this information is sent out to them. So we always want to make sure that they, that, that number is properly being used. Um, so when people move locations, this one needs to be updated for certain. Going on, we do have the email address section. You can change the email address, <clears throat> or you are welcome to assign multiple emails to their name. So you can only do up to five emails in total. So just be aware of that. You can change their voicemail pin from this section. You just can't change their password. 
You can also edit their answering rules. <clears throat> this is if you need to put someone in do not disturb. If you need to call or scroll directly to their voicemail, you would do that. Or if you need to forward their phone to somebody else, uh, you can do it from here. So we want to say this person is going to be out of office um, and we just need to send all their calls directly to their voicemail box. We can just hit the do not disturb on this. Um, let me go back in here because I just went a little quick. So you can find the answering rule for default. Go to the far right side, click the little edit button, <clears throat> and just select the do not disturb and hit save. Now we want to revert this change when that person gets back. We want to uncheck the do not disturb button. And then it should automatically revert back to the simultaneous ring with include user's extension and ring all users' phones. Now, in some cases, when you want to forward their phone, that button automatically gets unchecked. <clears throat> so we want to forward this to another colleague um, at the system. So we want Bethany's going to be out of office, and we want um, Jim Hopper. Um, he's going to receive calls. So we want to send calls directly to Jim while Bethany is out of the office. We just select the call forwarding always, find Jim in here, select the user section. We don't like to recommend using the phones just because sometimes uh, those phones change in and out. So if you might see, um, in this case, we have Joe Williams. He has four different phones assigned to him. If we just select his mobile app, well, none of the other phones will ring. So if you select the user, and then we know that his user profile will be the one distributing the call. So whatever Joe is using at the time of the call, um, he'll make sure to receive. He'll, he'll actually be able to receive that call. So we always recommend going to user, or you can always do the voicemail as well. And that just goes directly to that voicemail box. And we'll bypass any kind of ringing. So we want to revert this. We want to go back to our normal, um, our normal setup. Bethany's back in the office and they want to receive calls again. So you just want to go in and make sure that you select simultaneously ring and then ensure those first two boxes are selected. That just ensures that um, all phones that the person has assigned to them, desk phone, mobile app, anything of that nature, will be ring whether they're using it or not. <clears throat> all right, moving on. Uh, you can also, you can block or allow calls. Uh, typically, it's mainly just blocking the numbers in case if you get something coming in. Um, and that is on the answering rules section as well. In the top right corner, you have the allow and block button. And this is where you just type in the full digit number that you're wishing to block. And then hit the little plus icon and it automatically adds it to the block list. So if this number calls in to my extension, or in this case it would be Bethany, then that number will be blocked. If you're wanting to block it for the entire company, um, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, the main thing is having your call flow go through a particular um, call component. Uh, so in this case, we see that our main number is going directly to the auto attendant at 200. We would go into our user profile for 200, which is our night, night auto or um, our day auto attendant. So we'll have to unhide our system user, go into day AA for extension 200. This will tell you that you are editing a system user. We find our answering rules for the day auto attendant, and then we have our allow and block. So we want to block number, you know, 515, 15, 51. So now if this number calls into our main number, it will not get sent out to anybody else. It will be blocked right at, right at the beginning because that's our only number that we have. And then to remove them, you just click the little X button and then click done. You don't have to hit save, it automatically saves for you. Okay, so under the voicemail section, this is where you can edit any kind of voicemail box. Um, so for, let's go back into our new user, Bethany. So Bethany, we want to just create a specific voicemail uh, greeting for them. This is also where you can change the voicemail transcription for your users. If you want, a, if a user wants to have it added, um, they can either log in and do it themselves from their voicemail box, or you can go into the voicemail tab and then go to the voicemail transcription. 
is to move it from disable to include Google Cloud speech to text. Uh, this is a free feature, so no worries about if you wanted to have it on. Uh, the only thing is we do see that people don't like to use it when uh, HIPAA compliance is needed because um, it does, you know, it will transcribe um, that voicemail into a text. Now, only the first 60 seconds is transcribed, so just be aware if the voicemail is longer than that, not the whole thing will be recorded <clears throat> or not the whole thing will be transcribed into a text form for you. Um, additionally, you do have a uh, it does not retroactively go back through and transcribe your past voicemails. It is only the future voicemails that it will transcribe. And then below we see here that we need to create a voicemail greeting for Bethany. So we click on the little speaker icon to manage that. We click this text to speech. Uh, so that will just be, we can type in whatever we would like, you know, please leave in. Please leave a message after the tone, and then you can select a voice um, that you would like. Uh, for a female, female voice, Faye is a popular one to use. It's less robotic than the others. And then also for the male, we have Brian and Daniel's voices. Uh, those are pretty good too. So we select Faye here. I can click the play button. I think I have it where you all can hear it, but this is an example. So they'll just get a quick little, quick little uh, snippet of what you're listening to, um, but you can edit this down to whatever you need. It will follow your punctuation. So if you need a pause, make, you know, put a period or um, comma in there. <clears throat> and you may have to edit a little bit of the words to have it properly and pronounced. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on. We also have the upload option. So we can upload dot .wave files if you have a greeting that you need to add. Um, so this, all this stuff here will follow the same thing for your auto attendant as well um, and any kind of greetings that you come across. So record, this is our biggest one that people like to use. Uh, we'll just type in greeting and we want this, um, we want the person to able to be either yourself or you can send it to somebody else if you type in a different extension here. <clears throat> So we say 1002, we want them to do the recording. We can send it automatically to them, or we can change the extension to ourselves. You can also set it to go to your mobile app if you type in an M at the end, or WP for web phone if you're using a web phone or that person is using a web phone. And lastly, oops. Lastly, you can type in any kind of 10 digit number you would like. So if you need to send it to a cell phone number, or a home phone or anything of that nature, you can type that in as well. And then hit call. The system will dispatch a call to that device. Once you answer that call, it's gonna tell you to start recording your greeting. And then you just simply hang up when you're finished. This screen will automatically refresh for you and then you can select from that greeting. So for instance, let's just do uh, 317. So I'm just going to give this a few moments here just to make sure it does record something. So we'll just uh, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this call. And our system will automatically refresh and it should update for you. Looks like it did not want to do that. I wonder if it's because I am using a different thing. It might not bring up because I am calling, I'm doing it from a different domain itself. Verify this one more time. I might have hung up a little. There it goes. Okay, so it wasn't there. <clears throat> I just didn't give it a second to uh, refresh. Okay, so here's a greeting here. I just didn't record it. Um, there was a few seconds in there that I just I probably ended it a little too early. Uh, but now we have that greeting. Um, always recommend to refresh your page um, just to ensure that greeting shows up. Sometimes it doesn't automatically show up right away, so a quick refresh will bring that in. So you can just select that greeting and hit save. <clears throat> now, uh, going down further, uh, we do have a notification section. So you can choose whether the user will receive an email that they did get a new voicemail or not by checking that box. 
If you do want them to receive an email, you can select whether it's going to be a hyperlink. So that'll just be a quick link to go into the voicemail uh, versus the other option is an attachment. So with the attachment, they actually get a sound file sent to them in their email that they can then listen to that sound file from the email itself. Now, once that email is sent to you, uh, we have no impact to those emails. That will be entirely up to your email server on what it does with those or what the end user does. And then the after email notification, uh, you have a few different options. So there is no limit to how many voicemails you can have in the voicemail box. So you're welcome to leave them all as new, saved. Um, we do have a limit on the trash because the trash folder does empty out daily. Um, and that's at the end of the night. I, I don't know the exact time. It's around like 11 or 12, I think. So anytime a voicemail does get moved into the trash, just ensure that it actually does need to be in trash folder because once it's purged, it's purged from our system. There's no recovering it, um, but you're welcome to move them all. You can move them directly. A lot of people like to move them directly to the save folder and that way they don't have that blinking light because they're going to get a notification in their email anyways that they have a voicemail. Um, and that way the voicemail will save in their saved folder and they also get an email notification and they have it in two different spots and they don't have to worry about you know losing that voicemail unless they specifically delete the voicemail itself all right um, i did go over a few different things here i just want to take a quick pause just to make sure if you do have any questions please let me know Okay, no question at this time. Feel free to you know interrupt me at any time though. Moving on, we do have the phone section for the user. <clears throat> now the phone section will just I'll just go into my other account as I actually have something on there. I'll be under Joe Williams. All right, so here you will actually see what devices are assigned to that person. Um, we see that we have a desk phone which is that CA link a SIP T43U, a MAC address assigned, and it tells us we have one line assigned to this extension. We also have a mobile app, so the M device, and it tells you what the device actually is. It's on my Pixel 6 Pro. And then at the top, we do know that um, I have access to web phone at some point, so I do have the web phone client attached to the system. So it just shows you those um, if you need to delete them or remove them. Um, you can also edit any desk phones by clicking the little cog wheel next to that phone. That goes into our button builder. Click yes to go into the configuration. And this is where you'll actually see um, our list of, the, of numbers or the, the lines on the desk phone itself. You can add different BLFs, speed dials, um, or anything of that nature, parks, anything like that within here. Let's go ahead and cancel out of that. <clears throat> so that's just a brief overview of the uh, the users itself, how to recycle one, um, how to make some changes to that. Let's go ahead and go into the auto attendance section. So if you do use auto attendance or IVRs, um, you can go into the auto attendance. And we want to make a change to our auto attendant. We want to change some options on it. So we'll click the main auto attendant that we have, which is our day AA. This is where our first, you know, our calls go to automatically. We have the option to change our menu. Same thing as before with the voicemail greeting. Uh, you click the little pencil icon to manage the audio. Right now it's set up to text to speech. And you see here we have some um, some options listed for sales press one, for customer service press two, and we have some commas in here to just break that up. 365 has some spacing uh, just to kind of give it a little bit better flow. Then we have our options. When we select one of our options, we see um, so the little person, if I select an empty one, just so you can see what it looks like, um, you can select directly to the user account. That will involve um, sending the call through the person's answering rules, and that way you can choose what the call will actually do. If it needs to go to X employee during you know Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends it goes through X or sorry it goes to Y employee you know Saturday and Sunday. 
that will be all managed through the answering rule section. But that we always recommend sending it directly to the user in that case. Um, you can send it directly to a conference bridge, a call queue. Uh, that's where you can type in whatever queue that you're looking for. So sales uh, CRG. <clears throat> now, when you set it to go directly, directly to a call queue, you no longer get the option to um, use answering rules to edit it in any way. So just being aware of that, um, sending it to, directly to the call queue does give the option to announce number of callers in queue or average wait time. Um, so that is an option. In all of these, you will see a caller ID prefix option. So in this case, I think I, okay, I don't have it set up here, but in the caller ID, say we want to distribute um, or, or uh, distinguish our calls amongst each other. So say if we have a small team, uh, we have one team that answers calls for three different departments, sales, customer service, and you know marketing. To distinguish the calls between, like if we wanna know, okay, this person pressed option one for sales, I wanna know that that's a sales call coming up on my phone. Um, just simply go to the caller ID prefix and type in sales, and we can just type in a dash there for instance. So now, Anytime that we get a inbound call, sales with a dash at the beginning will show up on this particular call. <clears throat> uh, we can also do CS dash. Now we always recommend to keep this as short as possible as we are limited. You only get 15 characters on that display on your phone. Um, so anything past 15 characters will be cut off. Um, and it doesn't matter if you type in customer service as the whole thing. You know, we're already, that's eight, uh, nine, so what is this? Yeah, we're, we're already over 15 characters there, so it will be cutting off customer service, and you won't get any part of the caller ID. Um, so just be aware of, of how to um, use your caller ID prefix um, sparingly. It's always, shorter is always better if you want to abbreviate it for your team. Uh, we can go directly to a, the directory, company directory for you, to do by last name. <clears throat> you can send directly to a voicemail box. Um, a external number, we typically don't like doing the external number this way. We always like to create a separate account and then submit through the answering rules to do the external number. Uh, you can play a message, so this is where you would see like the location directions or the address or hours of operations. That would be under the play message section. Then you have the repeat prompt. So if the person presses option, say to really hear these options, press nine, you would say, you know, select a repeat prompt. And then there's also the add tier section. So adding tiers, that just gives you an additional op menu option. Um, so if you want to hear options for just a particular location, that will be how you do that. Um, you can set up as many as you would like. Uh, your tiers can only go to a second tier. Uh, you can't do multiple within the, within the tier system, unfortunately. Uh, you do have the option when you go through a tier, you have the option to go to the previous menu. So we'll go ahead and remove that. <clears throat> Our options here. That will uh, change up what the, if no key is pressed, you can select, set it to go to a particular option that's already created or just hang up the call, repeat the reading. Same thing with the, if an assigned key is pressed. Um, we typically don't recommend adjusting any of the timeouts before the, the key is pressed or anything like that. Uh, there is the option to add speech words. Uh, so this is if you have uh, customers that, that normally they go through and they want to just say sales. You know, we go to this, we want to add a phrase, say sales, click add, and now the person, if they say sales while they're listening to this greeting, it will automatically go to it, customer service. <clears throat> and billing, for instance. So now we have options that if any of these name, uh, words are said or phrases, it will automatically go to that option. So that's a handy little feature that people do like to use at times, um, or if you have uh, hearing impaired, um, issues or visual impaired issues. They can just speak that. <clears throat> Next up is the call queues section. So under the call queues, we do have um, ability where you can edit your call queues. If you want to select a queue, it's here. So we go into our billing. And say we want to change this from ring all, we want them to go into a round robin style. So I just will ring the first available or ring the longest idle available agent. 
Um, you can change that around. If we go into the preview options, um, it gives you a little bit more information or a little bit more settings. Uh, typically, these are not ex these are not adjusted. It's usually the in queue options that we adjust, and that would be the queue ring timeout. Or if you're using something that might go through multiple agents, um, you'll see that as well. <clears throat> so if I change this to um, round robin, and now I go to the in queue options, we see queue ring timeout just means the overall of how long that person is going to be in the queue. So this is set up for 60 seconds. And then the agent ring timeout, this will tell me it will ring every person in this queue for 15 seconds. So we have round robin, so it's going to go to the first person at 15 seconds. They'll move to the next one and so on and so forth until 60 seconds have elapsed. And then it follows the if unanswered section. If unanswered, we have it set to go to a destination, which just means it goes to our voicemail box. So very straightforward voice um, call queue to the voicemail box setup. <clears throat> and next one we can go into, we, you can actually see the calls in the queue. Uh, if we click that little zero button, it will show them in this list. You have the option to priority a call. Um, typically, I haven't really seen the priority work flawlessly, um, but that is an option where you can bump a call priority into uh, to be answered before others. <clears throat> the agents available, so there's two ways to actually look at the agents or the, uh, the users that are assigned to a queue. You can either select a little number under the agents available or select a little person icon. We'll go ahead and select the number. <clears throat> so we see that there's four people assigned to this queue. So we want to say Bethany is actually no longer in the billing queue, so she doesn't need to, she's not in the billing department, she's not gonna be answering calls for them. We can go ahead and hit the remove agent button, the delete button. Now Bethany is out of there. Say if Bethany actually is in the queue and we need to add her, we just click the add agent in the bottom right corner. We can either select the user, which will do any devices assigned to that person, or if we know a particular phone is gonna be used by the person, you can select that. Um, and that just means that it's going to go directly to her, their device. We'll select user and we'll just type in Bethany. And now any search boxes that we do have in our web app, uh, it will match any part of a name and extension. But I'll be mind that if we type in S-O-N, which is part of Johnson, it'll pull her up or A-N-Y. Again, any part of the name will pull up, any part of the extension will pull up too. So it's very helpful in that, where you don't have to do a big search on them or do the full search on their name to find them. So we want to find Bethany. We're going to select the online status because we want her to immediately take calls um, if her, she does have a device that is active and online. Though. <clears throat> we want to. We don't need any wrap-up time after the call, and she only needs to take one call at a time while in the queue. We don't have SMS signed as a setup on this account, and we don't need to worry about any linear hunt order or priority for this agent because uh, they're only in one queue, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we don't need an auto answer or request confirmation, so we'll hit save. Now we see Bethany's back in here and looks identical to the others with max call one. So once her phone comes online, whether she logs in or not, um, then you'll see her, her icon here go green uh, when she is available. Gray just means offline, green is available, and then you'll see a red is unavailable or on a call. Uh, that person can either be on D&D &D or um, on a call <clears throat> when you see that. Now we'll click done here. And let's go ahead and move into the time frame section. So this is where we're gonna get into uh, editing our answering rules. So if I, um, for instance, I just created one right before this where we're going to set up our after hours for our main number. So before we had all of our calls going directly into the main number and it will always hit our day auto attendant uh, where that gives kind of false, um, false lead to the person at the call. They think we're open and we're not actually telling them that we're closed. So we're going to create a time frame to um, combat that. So we'll click time frames here. As an office manager, you will see everybody's time frames. So you'll see different names with their extension. The one that you're looking for if you are editing uh, system users is just go into your own domain itself. So it'll be whatever that name is. 
So for my, for instance, we have level 365 training. That's the domain that called. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this after hours and we'll create that here in just a moment. And the holiday one. So we're gonna get add a time frame. So anytime we're that we need to edit or add an a answering rule, we must have a time frame to do that. Uh, so that's why we're going through this step. So we're going to type in after hours because we want to set up business. Basically, we're going to be setting up business hours <clears throat> for the company. Now, this might sound a little convoluted um, or a little uh, odd on why we're doing it this way, but we found that it works better if we select the time that your close rather than the business hours. Um, it does a pro it does it uh, the call flows a lot better, and we don't get the issues where um, time may may cross each other, and and maybe an unintended issue may pop up where you might be receiving calls when you're actually out and supposed to be closed, um, and that's just because of the order of the answering rules. So we always recommend doing the after hours in this case. We have three different selections, always days of the week and specific dates and ranges. So we're going to set up days of the weeks and times because we know that we're going to be closed on certain days. So we want, um, so anything that's going to be highlighted in blue will be active. So for after hours, we want anything in blue to be active. Um, and what I mean by that, we're not open Saturday and Sunday in this scenario. So we're going to select both of those days. And we're going to move the slider bar all the way over to the left to cover midnight all the way until midnight the next day. So the full 24 or the full um, 24 hours of that day, we want it completely closed. <clears throat> Same thing with Saturday. And then now for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and Friday, we are open, uh, but we're only open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So how do we do that? We just again select. Um, we select the, those ranges. So outside of, so we want anything before 8 a.m. to be closed and anything after 5 p.m. to be closed. So to create a split time frame um, to not cover our office hours, we're going to hit the plus button on each one of these. And now we can select, we're just going to quickly do this. We know that midnight or 12 a.m. is going to be uh, covered all the way until now we grab the slider bar on the next one and we're going to put that all the way to 8 a.m. So now between uh, midnight to 8 a.m. our after hours is selected and then anytime between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. that we're going to select is going to be our business hours. So it's going to follow our default rule. Um, so again, I do apologize. This just, I know this comes out a little bit uh, odd um, on how we do this but we just find it works a little bit better. So I'm just going to recreate that along the way. And the slider bar can be a little tedious at times. So I'm going to purposely miss that one just to show you what it looks like. So after we click save, if we go over the little information bubble next to the time frame, this is where you can double check that you selected the proper times. So we see Saturday, Sunday, fully closed, 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m., so it covers a full day. And then we see Wednesday, we actually see 12 a.m. to 8.15 p.m., or 8.15 a.m. So we know we, we actually messed up there. So this is a way to quickly check what times we've selected. So I'm going to go back into here find my Wednesday and correct that time down to 8 a.m. So now to set up that after hours time frame. So I probably selected the most complicated one to do <clears throat> in this scenario. Um, typically, this after hours is already set up um, when you first get implemented with the level 365, unless you all are 24 seven. So now that we've created our time frame, we're going to go back into our our uh, day auto attendant because our day auto attendant is housing our call flow because the calls will route to it first. We're going to select our day AA, go to answer rules. Now we see here, let me go ahead and delete this because it's no longer there. So as I mentioned previously, timeframes are going in a top-down order on when they're active. So temp forward, it's disabled, so it's not actually active. So it automatically defaults to our default. We're going to add our new answering rule for after hours by clicking the blue add rule. Select the after hours, click the always, 
then we wanted to always go to our night auto attendant, which is the night AA. So we go ahead and select the auto attendant because we want to go directly to it. Hit save. Now, typically, there the time frame will be put at the either the top or the second one from the below, from the um, second one from the top, um, somewhere in that range. Um, you always just want to make sure the order is correct. So in this case, we have the after hours always need to be above the default rule. Um, and that way, when today after 5 p.m., um, let me just show you what it looks like. Say we actually closed at 3 p.m. today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this down to 3 p.m. Hit save. So this is just what it looks like when you do, or when it is after hours, when the time frame is active. Now you see that that time frame does show the active button. So that's why that shows there. Uh, same thing, the same scenario goes with the holiday time frames. Uh, that one's just a little bit easier. Typically, this is always set up beforehand, so you don't. You're just going in here and edit the time frame. So I'm just going to type in holiday. And then we're going to select specific dates and ranges. So we always know. Um, so we are. There's actually an update coming to where you can um, push the particular days. Um, you know, it's always going to happen. Like we always know, uh, Christmas is always on the 25th. You always know uh, July 4th is on July 4th. You know, you will be. Able, or we're going to have a system to where it actually um, allows you to set that up for indefinite. So you don't have to come in here every year and create those. Um, but we're just going to say, uh, for some reason, July 26th is a holiday um, that we're going to be closed the whole day. So we're going to select our day that we need and select the full time range. So 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. It will cover that whole day for you. Then hit save. And if you ever need to come back in here and add any holidays, just select that holiday. And then click the little plus, bu plus button to add anything. So we want to say we want to come up here and we want um, October 31st is going to be off. We can select that day. And you can always edit that as needed. Then the same thing applies. We're going to go back into the answering rules of our, our auto tenant that has this. Add rule. Select holiday always. And we want it to automatically go to our night auto tenant. So for holidays and temp forwards, uh, we always put those on the very top because those should always take precedent over anything else. Because uh, if you're going to be closed on a particular days, we want we want that day to be active. So uh, I'm just going to take a brief pause because I know that can be a little uh, a little frustrating and confusing. to see if you have any questions. All right, uh, no question at this time, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, if you do think of one, please let me know. So next up is the uh, inventory section. So this inventory section gives you um, a, a very good insight of what is configured for your company, what different what numbers are doing, um, whether they're assigned to different people, or if you need to change them around, say someone left or is no longer using that number, you want to assign it to somebody else. This is where you can do that here. Um, to edit those, you just select the number. You change the treatment option. You can go say if we no longer want this to go to our auto tenant, we want it to go to a user. So we want this to be um, my direct number as John Smith. So I select user, select John Smith, and hit save. And now we see any call to directly to this number will ring John Smith. It will, it, will, it will go to his user profile, which in the user profile, then it will check his answering rules. So just always think of it as it starts with inventory, and the um, it will always tell you what it what it goes to. If it goes to a user profile, it will go to the answering rules, and if it's set to go somewhere else, then it will go, um, in some cases, you might see it go directly to a call queue, and that way it actually skips the answering rules. <clears throat> so just be aware of that, uh, but you can make those changes at any time. Uh, you can also add that caller ID prefix again um, if you want this to be set up as a DID. We can just let the person know that um, whenever they see DID, that just means that they're getting a direct call to their to their number versus a extension transfer or a call queue. 
Um, so it's just different ways that you can use that caller ID prefix. So I'm just going to revert this back <clears throat> to the Ottawa tenant. So we're going to select user 200 and hit save. Um, it does look a little goofy because the, uh, there's a visual bug here where it automatically just says auto tenant instead of user. Uh, but just know if you do see auto tenant, uh, it 99% of the time it's going to go to the user profile. We we never we try never to set them up to go right to the auto tenant. <clears throat> Um, here, if you do have SMS numbers, um, this is where you would edit them and to edit them uh, as far as who has the number assigned to them. Um, phone hardware, similar, it's going to show you any devices that you currently have. So this is hard uh, physical devices, um, so desk phones, Polycom, Yay Link, anything of that nature, or if you have like an algo for um, an ATA or something like that. And of course, your emergency numbers, uh, if you have multiple locations, this is where you would see multiple numbers in here uh, assigned to a particular location. And that's to properly give that emergency information as far as the address um, to the emergency services. Next up is the call history section. <clears throat> so this is where you will see any calls that are going on um, on your platform, whether they are made them, received them, anything of that nature. Um, additionally, as a office manager, we do have a handy feature called Cradle to Grave. Um, so for instance, we have Bethany here. Um, let me actually, I'm going to skip back a little bit. I think I have something in December. So you can only look at the calls a month at a time, like I said before. So just make sure you're, you're selecting that accordingly. You can select particular users. If you type in their extension or name, if you just want to see calls from that person, uh, specific departments, sites, or if you know the person that you're looking for, that like the number that they called or, or called from, from um, that's another way you can do it. And then the call type, uh, inbound, outbound, this extension, extension, and off net. Uh, typically, I just leave all that open and I just select what number that we're looking for. So we'll click filter. We'll see if I have anything available. Okay, so this one, um, we'll go with this top one here. Let's see what that looks like. Nope, that actually is not a valid one. Yes, this, yeah, sorry. These are all old calls, so that cradle grave is no longer there. So it only ha lets you do on recent calls. So let me actually go back. Apologize for that. And I just saw it in here. Uh, what did I do? Bring up filters. Now I made a change, and I'm not sure why. Apologize. <clears throat> All right, let me do a quick test call so I can regenerate a number. As the cradle to grave is very important to show. There we go. Okay, so for this cradle to grave, um, on the far right side of your call, you'll see this little um, little down arrow with a page. Click the cradle to grave, and this actually shows you what happened on that call. Um, this is actually not a great one to do. Let me, I'm going to make a mock call for you to see. Bear with me just a moment. Okay, <clears throat> let's see if that one shows up. Here it is. All right, so we're going to check out this cradle to grave. <clears throat> so it shows that, uh, oh, that's right, because I have it set to go right to my not auto attempt. So we see the call comes in from uh, myself, Eric Morgan, shows my number, shows a night auto attendant is being used. It shows what the current time frame after hours. So it connects directly to the night auto attendant tells you exactly what the component is. It shows I press option two. 
and it shows that uh, this is an unknown input because I don't have anything set up on option two. If we look at the auto attendant for night AA, I don't have anything on there. So that makes sense why it says there's a unknown input. By default, it will automatically repeat the greeting prompt. So it will keep repeating it until something is selected properly. And then it shows that a second later, I actually hung up the call. So it's a good little tool uh, to see what occurred on your calls. If you get someone saying that uh, they press, you know, they tried to call at 4 p.m. yesterday and no one was answering. Well, you can go in here and you can see um, if the person, if you know, who is it were actually ringing, if it actually was ringing anybody, and if they reached anybody. Um, and that was the way you can kind of call, you know, follow along your call flow and check and see what the the customer actually was doing on that call. Um, you know, some cases the customer may not be pressing an option when they should have been pressing an option, and so on. Um, so that's just something good to, to kind of look out for. But um, okay, I that wraps pretty much everything up that I was going to be doing for you. I'm just going to bring this up. Um, if we have any final questions, please let me know. Uh, we're going to go into the next section here real quick. Um, again, you can reach us uh, on our support um, and the various different methods. Please let us know if you need any assistance. You know, we're, we're happy to help you at any time. But uh, I do appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to uh, sit here on my training. Um, Again, after this training, within the next 48 hours, you should receive the recording for the training itself. If you do not receive it, please let us know. Um, send a, an email to our support team, or you can also send it to training at level365.com, and that will also notify us um, if we get that training sent out to you. <clears throat> but otherwise, I appreciate your time. Thank you again, um, and please have a great rest of your day.